Welcome back to Punished by David Labar. We are almost done the last few chapters. Moving on to chapter seven today, scrambling for answers. We'll see if Logan can maybe get out of his punishment. Here we go. It sounded simple once I checked the definition in the dictionary. Take a word, use all the same letters to make another word, and that is an anagram. So an anagram, you take the word, use all the same letters and make another word out of it. Like slow and owls or teach and cheat. Some words have a bunch of anagrams. React, trace, crate, cater are all anagrams of each other. It could be done with more than one word. New York could be an anagram for worn key. But now, how, I wondered, as I walked out of the library, was I supposed to put an anagram in a bag? I stared at the bag, trying to figure out how it would work. What in the world are you doing? I looked up when I heard Benedict's voice and I jammed the bag in my pocket. I just have an errand to ruin, I said. I'll catch up to you later. I mean, I'll sketch up with shoe later. No, I'll scratch pop. With who? I mean, oh, forget about it. The more I talked, the worse it seemed to get. Benedict groaned, Ugh, and he shook his head. You won't get rid of me just by making stinky jokes. If I can survive Uncle Horace, I can handle anything. Besides, I know what's going on. You do? I felt a flash of guilt, like when my mom caught me trying to hide the vase I broke. Benedict nodded. You're looking for words again, right? Anagrams, I admitted, feeling relieved that he didn't know more than that. I explained what they were. So what do you need them for? Same project, I started to move down the street. Look, I'm in school with you all day. I've never heard of any project like this. He stepped in front of me. It's not for school, I said, stepping around him. It was tough trying to keep all my answers short. Want help? He asked, stepping back in front of me. I was going to work on my report, but this would be more fun. No thanks, I said. It would have been great, but the professor had warned me not to get any more help. Some friend you are, Benedict said. He turned away and stomped up the library steps. Wait, I called. He just kept walking. Great, now he was mad at me, but there was nothing I could do about it right now. I had to find seven anagrams. I started thinking up all the short words I could and seeing if they had any anagrams. Place, no anagrams. I could find table, there was bleat. That's when they call the sound of a lamb or a kid makes bleat. I knew that because my grandpa had a farm with sheep and goats, but I didn't think there was any such thing as a table bleat or a bleat table. I kept thinking scale, laces, west, stew, lemon, melon, rat, art, <gasps> rat art. I said, that could be a picture of a rat. I just hoped it didn't mean a picture that a rat drew. I'd never have a chance of finding something like that. But where could I find a picture of a rat? Kaylee liked to draw and she loved animals. I ran home, went up to her room and asked her if she had any drawings of rats. Kaylee nodded, yep, I love to draw them. They're so cute. After digging around for a minute, she pulled out a nice picture of a white rat eating a hunk of Swiss cheese. You aren't so talented. Can I borrow this rat, I asked. Sure, you can have it. She handed me the pitcher and ran off. I pulled the bag out of my pocket. As I started to put the pitcher near the opening at the top, I felt a tugging like the bag was a giant magnet and the drawing was a paper clip. I let go of the drawing and swoosh, it got sucked into the bag. One down, six to go. I had a great idea. I went downstairs and dug through the boxes of games in the living room. We had one called Scrabble that used wooden tiles with letters on them. Mom and Dad played it all the time. I started pushing the tiles around looking for anagrams. Hey, tile and light were anagrams. I picked up one of the tiles. It didn't weigh much. I tried to put it in the bag. It would not go. Duh, I said as I realized my mistake. I had done the same thing last year on a spelling test. 
No matter what it might say on food boxes and menus, the word was not spelled L-I-T-E, it was L-I-G-H-T, for light. But I kept playing around with all the letters and came back with a bunch of ideas. Whenever I got one, I wrote it on a piece of paper. Speaking of which, peace didn't have any anagrams that I could find. Neither did paper. I figured I'd never find some of the things on my list, like a rock cork, since that didn't make much sense. Neither did door odor, shoe hose, or glass slags. I figured a taco coat would be hilarious, but I knew there wasn't any chance I'd find one. And if I tried to make one, I would mess up the whole kitchen. But I wrote down every single anagram I thought of just in case. A couple of times I got so close to good ones, it drove me crazy, like with apple. You can use most of the letters to spell petal, but then I realized I had two problems. I had a letter left over and I had spelled the wrong kind of peel. After I had a long list, I ran around looking for things that would fit my ideas. My quest took me from the basement to the attic. There were boxes of old dishes in the basement. I remembered we used them when I was little, but dad kept complaining they were too ugly to eat off of. So mom put them away. I hoped I remembered light. I searched around until I found the box. Yep, I was in luck. And yuck, I had to agree with dad about them. They were ugly. The plates were decorated with roses, lots of roses. Petal plate, I thought. Flowers were made of petals. I picked up a saucer, held it to the bag, swoosh, that made two, five to go. I ran through the rest of my list. The easiest ones were cat act. When I first thought of it, I wasn't sure I could find anything, but dad had taken me to the circus last year. And he bought me the souvenir program. There was a picture of the lion tamer. That was definitely a cat act. I tore the page out of the program, swoosh, in the fruit basket, I found a cheap peach. The sticker price was still on it. Swoosh. I figured that was it for the fruit bowl, but then my eyes fell on something else. Mom had bought some tangerines. And according to the sticker, they were from Argentina. Wow. I said it out loud as the letters clicked together in my head. An Argentine tangerine. I had to admit, I was really proud of this one. That made just five to go. Or excuse me, that made five, just two to go. I was on an anagram roll, and I knew exactly where I would get the last two. I went to the freezer and pulled out the bag of French fries. Mom always bought the same brand, Tater Treats. Not quite an anagram. If you use the whole bag, there was an extra S but take just one and you have tater treat. Perfect. I pulled out one of the stiff frozen pieces of potato and fed it to the bag. Swish. Then I went to my room. I had lots of old plastic toy animals, including a couple of horses. I dug through the box in my closet looking for the right one. There was this book about a horse that lived near the ocean, Misty of the Chin and Tag. I had a model of her since she lived by the seashore that made her a shore horse. Hey, I'll see you, Misty, I said, as I held her over the top of the bag. I'm a little sad I'll see you go, but mom's been nagging me to get rid of my old stuff anyhow. Swish, that made seven anagrams. This sure had been easier than the oxymorons, or maybe I was just getting better at it. At least I didn't spend the next day in school all distracted because my mind was dancing through the dictionary, but I still tried not to talk in class. What do you think, Logan? Mr. Vernack asked me a couple of times during the day. I just shrugged. I wasn't going to take a chance that the puns would get me in any more trouble. Benedict ignored me. I realized he was angry, but I hoped he would get over it. Ms. Glott, the student teacher, started to tell us how she liked words. Does anyone know what an oxymoron is? She asked. My hand shot up. I yanked it back down as quickly as I could. No way was I opening my mouth. She looked at me for a moment. Did you raise your hand? She asked. 
I shook my head and tried to look confused. I know, Benedict said. He smirked at me and gave the definition, the same one I had told him just the other day. He even mentioned the part about it being Greek. That was fine. If he needed to show off, I was not going to stop him. Impressive, Mr. Vernack said. Very impressive. He almost never repeated himself. I could see he was suddenly thinking about Benedict as a perfect student of the month material. Maybe Benedict would finally win that pizza he wanted so badly. Ms. Glatt went on to tell the class about oxymorons and anagrams and a couple of other things. The coolest one was redundancies. Redundancies were words you didn't need. Like, when people talk about a free gift, since a gift is always free, you don't need the extra word. Another redundancy was unexpected surprise. A surprise is always unexpected. Also pre-recorded. Anything that's been recorded has obviously been pre-recorded. She pointed out that pre and previous were often redundant. I hoped my next task was redundancies because now I would have a head start or a pre-start. Then Ms. Glatt told us some of her favorite words, including, including serendipity. That was what you call it when you find something you aren't looking for. Kind of like being at the right place at the right time. I thought about the Argentine tangerine. Talk about serendipity. Of course, right now, I couldn't talk about anything. Serendipity is also one of my favorite words. After class. I went across town to the library. What if he is not there? I wondered as I hurried downstairs to the reference section. Was there a word for when you don't find the thing you are desperately looking for? Nerendipity? Disenderpity? But he was right at the table. Seven anagrams, I said as I handed him the bag. He bounced the bag up and down in his palm for a second as he weighed it. He nodded and said, hmm, very good. What's next, I said. Redundancies? No, nothing that easy. He reached into his shirt pocket, pulled out a handful of rubber bands, dropped them on the table. They lay there looking like exhausted worms. Seven palindromes, he said. What's up? I caught myself as I picked up the rubber bands. That should be a snap. I grinned and groaned and realized I was even making puns in my head now. I headed for the dictionary and looked up palindromes. It turns out they were very cool. But the more I thought about palindromes, the more I realized they might not be that easy. We have one chapter to go, one more adventure with Logan. It's called Either Way, It's the Same palindromes, and have a great learning day.